Well, hello again. So we're on to 2.5. Given a scenario, implement measures to meet security requirements. Once again, we're following uh, CompTIA's exam objectives for Cloud Plus CV0-003 exam. Um, and we're right here on 2.5. Happy day. I'm gonna copy that. And that's what's right here. Cool. Let's get started. So tools, vulnerability scanners, oh, they're fun. Um, be able to scan to see what's vulnerable. Uh, these often, there are pros and cons. Sometimes they'll find faults. They'll think that there's a vulnerability that there's not. Other times they miss them. Uh, they're all different. Uh, and you can tweak and tune them in different ways. Um, the One of the things that uh, as a system administrator, I've known people to do uh, to have fun with these is is set the banner of your Apache, for example, to say your really old, old version of Windows IIS, and then all these red flags come up and because it thinks you're running Windows IIS. Um, port scanners, scanning what ports are open to then see if there's vulnerabilities there. Um, something that some people do is they change the ports that uh, things run on. It is it a good practice? I don't know. I've heard yes and I've heard no uh, from different people. Um, I Honestly, it will trick some script kiddies um, if you changed the port number. Um, good hackers, it won't matter much. Um, vulnerability assessments. So default or common credential scans. It's amazing how many people use default credentials or really easy um, credentials. Um, yeah, just not good. Uh, the credential scans, network-based scans, um, scanning what's there on the network, agent-based scans. So you can uh, you can actually have agents at, at different levels uh, and service availabilities. So we also have security patches. So this is interesting. Um, and I'm going to have to talk about this from my understanding of it, because some of these terms, uh, I, I don't know exactly why they're being used. So my understanding is hot fixes is when uh, something comes out and it needs to be fixed immediately. It's just for that specific thing. Uh, most, uh, well, Windows, for example, has scheduled updates where they just schedule and do regular updates. Uh, interesting thing is Linux. Um, it, all their fixes it's not they just go through a cycle and they just come out when they come out um, but some vendors it's scheduled um, virtual patches signature updates where they stick everything in together is a, a roll up so uh, there's just different ways of doing the security patches um, I, I would probably advise you to look those up a little bit better um, I, I, I may be a little fuzzy there um, okay, so implementing, uh, so risk registers. So what are your risks? Uh, do you need to mitigate them or not? Um, priority of the patching to, to mitigate those risks. Um, deactivating default accounts, for that matter, deactivating old accounts. Um, so what are the impacts of security tools on systems and services? One of the funniest instances I've had in my career is when I called the security team to let them know that we were being hacked. Well, we were being attacked. Uh, it looked like a denial of service attack. It was only coming from one IP, but it was knocking down system after system of these smaller systems, not the big enterprise stuff. And uh, I called the security team, gave them the information, and they said, oh, yeah, that's this place we were just visiting. That's us. We're running a security scan. Like, you didn't tell anyone. Um, yeah, don't do that. Um, anyway, so yeah, security tools, if not done well, and even when done well, if you have a system that's not set up well, uh, it can knock it over. So make sure that you communicate well. You have everyone's buy off. You don't just run something because you can. Um, gets you in trouble, even if you're on the security team. Um, effects of cloud service models on security implications, uh, implementation. So it, 
if you have local and cloud, having both makes things more complex and it's harder to track. So just that's a heads up. Um, whenever possible, it's probably good to be all in the cloud um, so that you don't have to worry about that. That's not possible for a lot of people. Um, for whatever reason, there's something they need to keep locally. We've talked about compliance. We've uh, talked about um, that there, there might be quite a few reasons. A, a great example um, that I still think maybe should be remain local because most people don't have the bandwidth to throw this up to the cloud is a good video monitoring. Um, so because you have video monitoring, uh, if it's local of your, of your business, of your campus, um, then if that's not in the cloud, you still have to track access to that. Uh, the reason it might not go to the cloud is that's a lot of bandwidth to be able to throw that uh, that video up to the cloud. Um, so anyway, it may be, maybe people have enough bandwidth. That's not a big deal. Um, but if you have stuff in both places, uh, managing and understanding the security implication, it's just more complex. So anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.